Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Imani from Team on for us and I'm finally here to give you what you've all been waiting on. Today we're going to go over the trunks list. I'm going to get into a tips and tricks video so that everybody can understand what car choices I made, why I made them, and what choices you can make instead if you want to play it a little bit differently. So without further ado, here we got the list here. This is the... Uh-oh. Sorry, wrong deck box. Okay. Yeah, this looks better. So this is the list here. We're going to go over it in just a second. I'm going to put these all on the table for you. All right, so let's get started. First of all, I want to give a shout out to Jim and the ARG staff. This is a very nice mat. I'm glad that I was able to get it. And the fact that they were making different mats each month, I got to get to one at, best, at least every month just to collect the mats. This is a very nice mat. And I love these sands here. Most of them. I could probably do without go tanks, but I love the way this is designed, without a doubt. So let's get into it, guys. So this is your Chunks deck. Obviously, that means that Trunks is going to be your leader. Now, the power behind this leader here is that he allows you to build your deck to go either direction you need to. You can be the aggressor in the game and play and deal a lot of early game damage, push your opponent into place, deny some resources, and still be able to get a strong finish. Or you can play a slower control matchup. The important thing is that when you're using this deck, you want to make sure that the pace is under your control. If you're going to play control, don't let your opponent push you out of control. If you're going to play aggressively, don't let your opponent take over the aggro. Control the flow of the game as much as you can and make sure that your opponent is playing against you, not the other way around. For people that don't know, he says once per turn, whenever you combo with a card that has an energy cost of two or more, that'll be up here in the top corner, you draw a card. It's a very simple effect. It's not all that broken. He's not tier one, best deck in format. He's probably like a tier two, two and a half, in my personal opinion. But it gets the job done. It lets you to control the tempo. On the other side, he does the exact same thing. Now note that the best thing about him is that he's a different card on the other side. So if you are in the middle of a combo phase and you combo to draw with this ability, you can then flip him over if you're able to draw two from the awakening and then combo again and draw from this side. So it's important to note that you can really generate a massive tempo swing when you're able to awaken in the same turn that you're pressing aggression. So keep that in mind when you're playing because that's going to be a very strong move for you. I do it a lot and it'll turn your hand sometimes from three, four, five cards to nine, ten plus. That's where you're really able to make those end game pushes. So first thing I want to start off with, always start off with the core. And in this game, even if you're playing aggro, even if you're playing control, you're going to have the same core in this build. That's going to start you off with the cards that let you draw when you play in the early game. That's going to be your boo. Obviously your piccolo is going to be core, it's your 10k boost. Um, 4 of Goku and 4 of Android 19. When you're playing aggro and aggro matchups, especially matchups where your opponent is taking life like Goku Black or Vegeta, something that you can push aggressively, you're trying to turn off their ability, you don't want Black ramping, you don't want Vegeta critting, 19 becomes the star in that matchup because that forces your opponent to take his eyes off of pressuring your leader, Vegeta's case mostly, and put their eyes on 19. Since in most cases the Vegeta early game starts off with either a Majin Buu of their own or in most cases a Bulma, it's not really strong enough to push 19 and then in the most cases again their 2 drop generally is objection and so it becomes difficult for their characters to secure a kill on 19 but they can't have it stay there and draw more cards. If 19 draws 2 cards it immediately became twice its value so they gotta put the pressure on it and they'll generally use their leader to do it. That way, Vegeta takes his critical off of your leader and pushes damage into 19 and it allows you to extend your time before you have to worry about being denied of your resources. In every other matchup, however, it's generally the four of the Goku that you want to be looking for. These are auto keeps in my hand, Boo and Goku, because they are automatic draw ones. You don't require anything other than the mana and the card. And so when you do it, they become replacement effects. Goku in particular can also be aggressive if you need his 10k to push damage on an early leader. But he also is unique for being able to combo and draw cards with your leader. And then he also is a Goku. So that's important for the super rare trunks that you're going to try to use to close out games. That you have this guy either on board or in the graveyard. 
So both of them are very powerful in the ability to regenerate your lost advantage while you're trying to keep control of the board or keep something on the board. But he becomes unique in that regard that he can push aggro or push control. Book and two, but a little bit to a little lesser of a degree. I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. So early in the game, you're trying to start off, you're keeping these automatically, and then the rest of the cards depend on your matchup. You want to open a blue curve into green. Once you hit blue on one, green on two, it's not too much important which way you're going. The only case may be if you're trying to get into TN on an early three, you're going to need another green. But in most cases, I'm perfectly fine having one or two blues in my mana area for the whole turn. Since you're MVP, the two drop trunks allows you to untap your mana, whichever one you choose when he's comboed. We'll get into that. So that's the standard core. And then in my defense text, obviously, I'm going three cents of being. I frequently go back and forth between three and four of these depending on the format. Sometimes it can get kind of aggressive. It can get really token heavy. And then I'll start to play four so I can deny that early damage from that flood of tokens with a flood of early game pushes. But in most cases, it's a simple three of. And then I've got my four weeks coercions. I consistently go back and forth between four coercions and four coercions. Yes, you heard that correctly. I will not play less than four of this card. It is absolutely insane. It's a free, uh, free negate, and that's all that you needed to do. That's all you needed to do. When you get into the late game and you're playing the strong controls, really, really prioritize your coercions so that you can defend yourself after you're tapped out and you untap with the trunks or something like that to get the proper defense after a strong push in case it fails. Because there's always the possibility your opponent is going to coerce you through your attacks or whatever his negate may be. And then you've got to actually survive the next turn. Senzu beans become very important in the early, mid, or late game if you have to use them aggressively so that you can extend your plays or get the power into your pushes like if you got a Senzu being a Majin Buu so that you can get a damage through on your opponent's leader or if you have to Senzu being on whatever attack so that you can get the mana you need to make another attack very solid um, and now onto the MVP of the deck guys I recommend four of them in any, word, any version of Trunks you play if it's my version if it's someone else's even if it's not Mono Buu play four of this guy he it's clutch. I'll never, ever, ever play this deck without four of them. And that would be your man right here. Boy, if you don't get... Sorry, let me... Wrong card. And that would be your man right here. Unyielding Spirit Trunks. Very simple card. Two lines of text. It's actually like one sentence. It's a very simple card. He's a free boost. He's a two drop. So the unique interaction with this Trunks and your leader Trunks is that when you're attacking, you'll be able to replace him in your hand by drawing a card when you combo, and then he will restand one of your mana, untap one of your energy, active, whatever they call it. He's going to give you one of your energy back so that you can then either further your play more aggressively or so that you can set up for a defensive play the next turn. I would never play this deck without four of them. Every iteration that I've built that has had less than four of them has been consistently slower, and I don't prefer to be slower. I like to control the tempo, so I'm definitely going to stick to four of these. I never have to charge him, thankfully, and he's always good in my hand when I have him. I keep one in my opening if I know I'm going to play aggressively. Don't keep more than one at any time, but if you're going to play aggro, keep one. And he's also very clutch in the two out of two times that I've had to go into sudden death in time. Thank you, Brendan Ackerson, for scooping me up 2-0 in round three and allowing these people to remember that I'm not better than you just because I sacked you in the top eight of New Jersey. Clearly a better player than me. Four Sailor Vegetas. Now we're moving into the mid game. Now, at some point in this game, you're actually going to have to deal damage to win. So you want to make sure that your damage is valuable and this it's about as valuable as it's going to get. 15k allows you to push any leader, unawakened or awakened, and the critical denies them the resource of drawing the card back. So eventually you're going to have to start dealing damage, and this is a good way to start it off. If you need to, he's a free boost as well. He also draws with your leader. It's very important that you're playing at least four Vegetas. It's kind of yucky when I cut this back, but every so often I've cut it to three. It gets yucky. You have to have them for your six drop trunks in order to finish the game, either a Vegeta in the field or on the, in the graveyard alongside Goku. We'll get into that later, but this is definitely a good card to have when you're ready to turn the, uh, the tempo into aggro so that you can deal the damage you need to finish the game later. 
Now here in the other side of the mid game, it gets a little varied. I'm playing 2TN because I, you need a self-awakening card, number one. But I kind of like TN because he's when you have results of training and you draw results of training after you're awakened, it literally does nothing except charge as a blue mana. And that could be any other blue card in the game if I just wanted a blue mana. So TN kind of fits in as also being a character and he's worth a 10k boost. It's a pretty difficult boost to pull off, costing two, and it's not really convenient, but it is a 10k boost at least. Result of training is actually nothing. And so Tien also has a unique advantage that he's allowing you to deal some decent damage to the board. Now, if I have to, I'll side Tien out in some matchups for the result of training, if it's a slower matchup, or if I value my life because my opponent has a high threat to kill me from three life. And this is constant because you're generally going to get set to five before your opponent double strikes you to start trying to kill you. And Tien will then shoot one life to grave and shoot one to your hand. So it's going to put you at three. And that's an awkward number to try to survive them in some of these matchups. These decks nowadays have some very high kill potential. So it's going to be dangerous to push yourself down to three versus keeping yourself at five. So in those matchups, I got to side the TNI, it just has to happen. But in most cases, he starts off being the chosen lead in the deck versus Resort Training. Alongside that, now this combo, I consistently go back and forth in. This is the Gohan and Piccolo combo here. Now, normally I'm playing three Piccolo, three Gohan. Right now I have three pick, uh, two Piccolo, three Gohan. I'm testing it in this version. I still kind of like three Piccolo, three Gohan more. And um, if that were the case, then generally towards the, um, the later um, stages of the deck, I will have to cut the Yucky Vegeta back. And I, like I said, I really don't prefer to do that. But 3 and 2 so far seems to be working solid. This combo I chose for the main deck specifically because of the Ginyu matchup. Let me explain. When you go first in the deck and you get to your third mana before he does, and then you know that they don't actually play three drop removals, you drop the piccolo, and then you press them out in the early couple of stages while they're self-awakening so that they can get into awaken, then you drop the piccolo. And so it forces them to either crush or ball the piccolo, because bloodlust doesn't work on it, and then they allocate their resources into killing it, or they don't awaken because they see the piccolo, and then they can't actually do anything to it, because he, your leader is only 10k and you can't really kill it. But if you do allocate the resources into removing the Piccolo on turn 3 since you don't have a solid removal for it, then you go into the Gohan of 4 and the Gohan Sun is the other Piccolo. This is why I play 3 of this card. So that now you have the double striker on board. Your opponent generally taps out to kill this because it's a 3 mana to get to 15k in most cases. And no, not a lot of 2 drop 15ks I see in these decks. So they generally tap out to remove this once they crush or ball it, which pulls a negate and all their mana and a 3-drop. That usually it's Gotenks, so it's better off attacking a leader. It's just all kind of denial in this play. And then you drop the Gohan, and then the Piccolo comes out. The Gohan is a 20k double striker, so it's very strong when your opponent's tapped out. It takes 10k to combo over it, just so that it doesn't destroy two of your life. And that's difficult when your opponent's tapped out. It's generally going to pull a Dodoria. And if it doesn't need to pull a Dodoria, or if you're not even interested in it and you just want to keep control of the board, the Gohan can trade into whatever three drop kill the Piccolo if the leader wasn't able to. And then you still get another Piccolo on board. This Gohan also allows you to search this Piccolo towards the later game so that you can have the 10k on board knowing that you're going to have it safe. It's going to draw your card when you combo still from board. You're going to draw an extra one from trunks still. And so these never become dead. They're just very strong double strikers. And these are also important if you find yourself using the seven drop Gohan, the super rare, so that you can evolve on top of it. I do that every so often too. I'm back and forth with it. It's not in my best of one deck. It's not in my current best of three deck, but I have done it before. And if you're going to do it, you are going to need three of a four drop Gohan, whichever one you pick. So this combo, and then I've got for my other four drop, four of the KOs. This is Bay. She does not go anywhere in any of my green decks in less than four, and I do not play green decks without her. So that pretty much sums up how many of them I recommend playing. You don't have to do four. I'm going to do four at all times. You don't have to do four. I can't stress that enough. You don't have to do four. 
but four I recommend, and that's because she never really gets dead. She's a free 5k boost and a four drop, so she will draw you cards. But on board, she has three, three very strong effects. Most of us pro old Yu-Gi-Oh players know that three good effects on a card automatically makes the card powerful. 20k is huge for a four drop. She does require a sacrifice. However, you can sacrifice her if it's a, that tight of a situation, but then she will destroy up to five entrance calls. That's all the tokens by default. That's Gotenks, and all of Gotenks' is tokens. That's any five drop, any four drop with a one drop, any three drop with a two drop, two two drops and a one drop, five one drops. However you want to clear the board, she'll more than likely clear the board. When you're going back and forth on the trade phase, she's going to clear the board. And this is where you do your tempo shift. It's either here or it's here. Now, if you just let your opponent start off with control of the game because he thinks that he's in control and that's cute and all that, so he's going to start making these subpar plays to try to keep advantage, boom, and then you just steal it back from him. Now you have the critical on board, and now she's regenerating lost resources that you may have had to put out earlier to protect yourself or to further aggression as she demands... She demands a response because if not, she will crit your life and she will deny you those resources that you could be getting back. This is probably one of the strongest shifts into late game you're going to do since between her and Vegeta or her and Gohan, you can effectively deny your opponent the ability to stay above five life. Or if they're self-awakened, you could just set them straight to three early on because she's hard to block. Or pull all their remo uh, pull all their negates or all their cash. She's very hard to deal with. She demands a response, and that's why you play so many of her. Now, in this particular build, this is my best of three build. In the best of one build, you can clearly see you don't have any hard removals in this list. And the reason that I um, emphasize hard removal is because Kale only takes up to a five drop off the board. Some people in best of threes will try to side out into this combo and instead we'll use the four drop Super Saiyan Gohan um, this Gohan right here or they'll try to use Furious Yo Vegeta because Furious Yo Vegeta is also a removal this card right here that allows you to self awaken and gives you another Vegeta in your deck for your Trunks combo whatever the case if you're in best of three you can switch to another four drop so that your opponent doesn't lock you out of the ability to kill his bigger drops because then you may find yourself forced to try to kill him since you can't actually remove his characters don't ever feel pressured by six drops and seven drops that you feel like you just can't remove just go around them. but in best of three sometimes you can't get around them and you don't want to lose a game because you don't have hard removal and your opponent knows it so instead of trying to push you when he doesn't have to he'll just flood the board with drops you can't answer and that'll become a problem but in best of one it's that list right there and i never rely on tm for a removal that's kind of not a good safe place to be now you're finishing here with your go tanks and your trunks I play four of each of them because as you notice, these are the last drops in my deck. It is not a whole lot of late game in here. They're actually the only 10k boosts that I play. Those and this kid here. You can count 10 if you want to, but if you have to combo with them, you're probably in a bad spot. These here, this is where you set up for the triple double. And the triple double is clearly from five life in the perfect world. You get a double strike to three and then a triple strike for a game. But in the non-perfect, then the commonly seen world, you're just going to have to triple strike your opponent because they're probably sitting at four or even three. Go tanks from three generally will pull a removal. Guaranteed you're going to pull a removal, a negate, a counter. You have to block them. You don't want to go to one because this will be the deck where a card like Majin Buu or Android 19 will threaten lethal on you every time you see it. And then once I get six mana open, I tap one for a boo, swing, you got to block that. Tap another two for 19, swing, you got to block that. I'm drawing cards on every summon. Tap two more, summon Goku, you got to block that. Swing in, combo trunks, untap, scissor bean, untap. Now he's 20k, you still got to block that. Tap two more, drop another one. It's going to get problematic once you hit one life. So you must block him from three. You generally have to block him from four, but you definitely have to block him from three. And that pulls those negates and those counters and those extra combo cards so that you can push him through for three damage safely. And he's probably the hardest card in this deck to fight against because he's an automatic 35k or 30k, depending on whether or not you get negated. 
But as soon as he goes sideways, his ability combos a blue card from the from the graveyard, no matter what the circumstance is. If he goes sideways and he gets hit by Enraged Gohan and he goes, Psh, you still combo. If he gets hit by Coercion, you still combo. You must do the effect. He will combo a blue. You can either combo Piccolo for the draw two plus 10,000 if he sticks to the board. If he doesn't, combo the little trunks from the graveyard for the plus 5,000, draw the card, untap the mana to stay safe on defense. Generally, this is a six drop, so you will be tapping out for it. It's okay to tap out for it. Like I said, even if you get negated, you will get that mana back. And that's how you finish it out. <clears throat> this is not a necessary four of this. I strongly recommend it for. You can cut a couple of these, like in one build, I was playing three of these, and I was playing two of the Super Saiyan Gohan. In another build, I was only playing two of these. I don't recommend two at any time. Three is usually ideal. Four is my preferred number. But do it how you want to. Stretch it out and just kind of see what fits you. Um, most of the time, in opening hands, if my hand is already set up with the Boo or the Goku or whatever it is, I'll keep one of these in my opening hand because you are kind of strict on your blue cards. There's not a lot of blue cards you can afford to tap or to charge. I mean, let's just, you have these, and then you've got Vegeta, this guy, this card, this card, these, and these. So out of these, I never want to charge a boo. I mean, that's usually what I'm charging to summon. I never, you never want to charge this. You just don't want to have to do that. You don't want to have to charge him. You don't want to have to charge any of your defense cards. So it usually comes down to these two. This is why I stress playing four. Because you kind of need him more often than just in the graveyard or on board. You're more than likely going to have to charge him some games to make the blue mana early. And then I always keep one of him in my hand if I have him for that exact same reason. So that's the deck. Um, those are my tips. This is a mid-range deck, if you will. It's a tempo deck, as um, Dusty accurately named it. It is designed to control the flow of the game. It is designed to keep the pace in your control, to keep your opponent on their toes, to constantly keep regenerating resources, spitting out cards onto the board. So your opponent not only has to answer your strong board, but also has to be concerned about the higher number of cards you consistently have in your hand and the high amount of kill potential, the high amount of threat your, um, your combos possess to their survival, essentially. So that's how it goes. In my opinion, it's a strong deck. It's not tier one. It probably won't be tier one. The leader just does not do that much, except when you utilize him. And then you might look like you're playing tier one. But it's, he's not tier one. He's probably like a two. But I like him so far. Um, he's been known to be now my signature deck. It kind of, when you think of me, you think of Trunks, you think of Trunks, you think of me. But um, I didn't build it first, I'm pretty sure. But um, I do like using it. It's fun to me. And it's explosive. So however you want to build it, knock it out. This is my list. If you want to give it a shot on your own, by all means, I'm open to any questions or any advice you may want to hear. And that'll do it for me. So have fun, build, and play.